Hey, what's up, guys? Thomas Edwards, creator and author of the upcoming book, The One Up Effect, here to share with you the four principles that make up the One Up Effect. So thinking about this, my transformation, the kind of work that I've done uh, with clients over the 10 plus years I've been doing this, I really wanted to make fun the biggest component of these principles. And I also want to connect gaming to real life because believe it or not, gaming has a lot of connections to how we show up in life. And if we just allow ourselves to be immersed in that experience, we can find life to be a lot more fun. And so these principles are definitely tied to what creates the one-up effect in terms of high performance, happiness, and peace of mind. But also these are principles that can be applied to all areas of your life. And so I'm excited to share with you each principle. Starting with number one, accept your character. You see, in a game, you can pick whichever character you want to be and go off on this journey. So you can pick a character based on how they look, how they perform, um, or if you just want to completely escape yourself, you can pick whoever is the complete opposite of you. you the choices are endless. But in this game called life, you can't choose. The character's already been chosen. It's you. And when you're in a place where you're not able to accept your character, it makes it very, very difficult for you to be empowered and be equipped to go off and create the life that you want. And listen, your character is made up of a lot of things. There's strengths, weaknesses, good things, bad things, the light, the dark. And I keep using these air quotes because we often see the, these certain aspects of ourselves so polarizingly in the sense that you know, we don't want to talk about the bad things. We want to hide those things. But the truth is, this is all a part of who you really are. And in fact, you know, in my experience, what I found is some of what I thought was my worst things, my greatest weaknesses, or my darkest of dark, has been the source of my greatness, my, my light, and my ultimate happiness. And it, it required me to accept and embrace those things in order to really become fully accepting of the character that is me playing this game. And so until you're able to fully accept you as a character playing this game, you won't be fully empowered and equipped to take on life in the way that you ultimately desire. Principle number two, know what game you're playing. You see, I often see that there are a lot of people who say I'm winning the game and I'm succeeding and, and focusing everything about their life based on success when you look a little bit deeper, you're not really seeing them happy. And to me, I ask the question, well, are you really winning? Oftentimes I find if you're successful and you're not happy, chances are you're playing someone else's game and that person is happy and winning. <laughs> and so what could that look like for you? Well, you got to take a step back and start looking at every dimension of your life. We often focus on one dimension of our lives because it's safer, it's, it feels more manageable. And if we're really good at it, then we can create a lot of success in that one dimension. But that comes at a cost. That cost is the other areas of your life tend to be lacking, maybe even atrophy over time. And so, yeah, of course, you might see a lot of people who are professionally successful, but not so successful when it comes to their health or in their romance. You might see a lot of people who are really physically fit and they look aesthetically pleasing, but may not be so successful in their careers. You might see people who are great in relationships, but maybe not so great with their kids. You see, we, when we focus on one dimension, then we forget that there's other dimensions of our lives that are also important and matter, but we're just not as good at that. But if we can understand what game we're playing, then we can determine where we can focus our energy on. And the truth is, if you're really good at something, chances are it doesn't require that much attention for you to stay good at something. Principle number three, learn how to play. See, in any game that you play, you start to learn the fundamentals of how to play that game. For example, in Super Mario Brothers, we've learned that the fundamentals of that game is running and jumping. And the funny thing is, that is the only thing that you need to learn throughout the entire game. The puzzles get more complex, they change, there's a lot of variety, but the running and jumping stays the same. And I believe that this is how it works in real life. 
Your life is made up of a game loop, fundamentals that you do throughout your entire life. And how well you've mastered this game loop will determine how you're able to level up. And if you haven't mastered this game loop, there are gonna be some levels of the game that you just can't work your way through. And if you're able to understand what that game loop is for you, you'll be best equipped to take on any challenge that you face. And along with that comes power-ups. You know, in Mario, we had the red mushroom, the fire plant, and so many more power-ups, but we don't realize that those things exist in real life. And when we're able to discover what those power-ups are, we're actually able to accelerate our ability to overcome challenges, to enhance our life, to experience greater fulfillment and happiness and success, all by doing the work and discovering what those power-ups exist. And the fourth principle, and my favorite, <laughs> is to play to have fun, then win. A lot of us have this backwards. We think that when we play a game, it's we're supposed to win, that the whole objective and the purpose is to win, when the truth is games were only designed to have fun. Winning becomes a byproduct of playing the game. And so when we're able to flip the script and we play for the for purpose of having fun, so many things open up. Our desire to keep playing, our ability to improve, our ability to have uh, be curious of alternative paths to success and winning the game. Our skills improve, our decision makings improve. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But when we're focused on winning, none of those things actually happen. In fact, the, the more you're focused on winning, the less those things actually occur. And so what I found is when people focus on playing, winning just happens to just be a byproduct of the experience and almost virtually gar is guaranteed to happen because you're having so much fun. And so for any game that you decide to play in life or virtually, when you play to have fun, it actually increases your chance of winning. And the, the best thing about playing any game is you never lose unless you stop playing the game. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Comment below. Let me know what you think about the four principles of the one-up effect. If you want to learn more about the one-up effect, you can go to the one-up effect.com and learn everything about the methodology, how this all works, what the power-ups look like, what's the game loop and everything in between. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Get notified when we put out videos, which happen almost every single day. And if you think this video is interesting, please share it with someone who might actually like this too. Once again, this is Thomas Edwards, creator and author of the upcoming book, The One-Up Effect, inviting you to make life a game that you can win and have fun playing. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.